Code Explain says hi. So today we're going to code a model using JavaScript and CSS. But in the previous part, we have already discussed the logic behind the code that we're going to type in today. So if you didn't watch it already, I suggest you go and watch the logic part before we carry on. Anyway, let's see what we're going to build in this tutorial. So when I click on the button here, the model shows up and we can close the model here just by clicking outside of the model. Also, we can like create a model where we have an X button to close the model. So this is what we're going to create in this tutorial. And now I'm just going to go into my desktop and create a new folder. I'm going to call this model JS. And then I'm going to open my text editor and open the project or the folder in the desktop. I'm going to go and create three files, which are the index.html and the model.css and then the model.js. Let's go first and create some HTML code. For the title, I'm going to just say model.js model and then I'm going to link my two files, the style file, the model.css file and the script or model.js file. And now I'm going to create some content for my model, a button to open the model with the class name open model and then a dev with the class name model wrapper, then model content and some lorem epsom inside. Now I'm going to go and open this with live server. Now I'm going to go into my model.css and the first thing we're going to do is to style our model. So we're going to style this element to like look like a, a model. So for the button, we need to add a cursor pointer. So it gives this feeling that it's clickable. And then for the model wrapper, I'm going to set its position fixed. Then the background is an RGBA, so a black color and then an opacity of 0.6. I'm going to set here the width to 100% and also the height. Then I'm going to change the position of it, top 0 and left 0. And then here the Z index to 1, so it's going to be at the top or on top of all the elements. Now by default it's going to be displayed none, but I'm just going to comment out that. Now let's go and style our model content. The position is relative and then the width is 60%. I'm going to set the background to a white color. I'm going to add a border radius of 5 pixels and then some padding of 20 pixels. Then I'm going to set top to 50% and also left to 50%. And then I'm going to use transform translate and minus 50% for both X and Y to center it. So now our model content is really centered. Now I'm going to set back display to none. And now we need to click on the open model, the button to open our model. So now I'm going to change this to like anything that a user there might use, like random uh, class names. And then here I'm going to like put in some content like a form to subscribe or whatever. And then here a button. Now I'm going to go to the bottom and add a script. And here I'm going to call a function called model, which we didn't create yet. Here our function. Okay. I'm just going to set this to an ID just to show you that our function can take in as selectors, IDs and class names at the same time. 
So I'm going to pass in the selectors for the elements of my model to the function model. And here I'm going to say this true just to like add the X button to close the model. Now I'm going to open the console. It says that the model is not defined. The function is not defined because we didn't create that yet. So I'm going to go now and create the function model. So it's going to take in open model selector, wrapper selector, and the content selector, and then close model, which is by default set to false. Now I'm going to go and select the elements. I'm going to select the open model button using query selector. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the others, like for the model wrapper selector element, and then the model content element. So now that I've selected all the elements, now I can do whatever I want with them. And the first thing we're going to do is to start the model elements. So using the class list and then the add method, I'm going to add the, the appropriate uh, class names to those elements. For example, here it's going to be open model. If I save, now you can see that it's uh, the cursor is a pointer and it gives the feeling that it's clickable. Now I'm going to add for the wrapper element, the model wrapper class name. I'm going to add that to its class list. So now if I save, you can see that it's gone because display here is set to none. And now I'm going to add the content, uh, the model content class name to the content element, the model content element. Now we need to open model on click. So I'm going to add an event listener to the model button, open model button. We are just going to go and like set the display property of the wrapper element to block. So it was set to none and now we're sitting back to block. So here it's uh, the display is none and now it's blocked when we click on the open model button. So if I click this, on that you can see the model shows up and now we need to like close the model we can either close the model by clicking outside or adding an X button so let's go and add an X button so if the close model here is set to true then we need to like add to the inner HTML of the content this HTML entity which is a multiplication sign you can see it there now now we need to style it. So I'm just going to copy this class name here, go to the model.css. So I'm going to set its position to absolute and then top or right to five pixels and top to 15 pixels. I'm going to set the font size to 25 and then bolder to the weight and then the family is Arial. I'm going to go and set the line height to zero. And then I'm going to set its color to this RGB color. Now I'm going to add, uh, so on hover, we need to like change the color to uh, a black color. And then the cursor is going to be a pointer. That's great. Now let's go back to our model.js file. And here we need to like, uh, select that X button. So I'm going to use query selector, but not on the document, but on the modal content element. And then I'm going to pass in the class name here, which is closed model. And now I'm going to just add an event listener, which is an unclick event. And I'm going to set the display back to none this time to close the model. So now if I open the model and then click on that, it doesn't work. I'm going to open the console. So it says that we can access property of close model button. So uh, yeah, we have to like say here a dot for the class name. Now I'm just going to go and open that. If I click on it, you can see how we can close the model now. Now let's go and like close the model when I click outside of the content element. So I'm going to add an event listener to the model wrapper element. 
and then I'm gonna pass in a function and this time we need the event, the click event. Now I'm gonna go and like just copy this in here and save. Now if I open the model and then click outside, you can see that it's closed whenever, wherever I click and that's because of the event bubbling. So we talked about this in the previous part, which is the logic part. So to fix that, we just need to add an if statement to check if the target, if uh, the element we clicked on is the modal wrapper element itself. So if that's true, that's when we need to like close the modal. So here I'm just gonna go and check that. Now you can see that if I click inside, it doesn't close, but if I click outside, the modal closes. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go and add some animations. So I'm gonna add some keyframes here. We need a, a slide in. So this will go from 60% from the top because our uh, content element has this relative position. So I can use top. So I'm gonna go from 60% to 50% and also I'm gonna play with opacity from zero to one. So it's gonna slide in and also fade in at the same time. And also here I'm gonna like create a fading animation from the wrapper. So from zero to one for opacity and that will make it fade in. So for the model wrapper, I'm gonna use animation name. The animation name is gonna be fade in. And for the duration, it's gonna be a uh, one second. Here for the modal content, the animation name is gonna be the, like the slide in. So it's gonna be, it's gonna slide in from the bottom to the top. And then the animation duration is also the same one second. Now you can see the animation is done. And that's great. So now we're done, but let's go and try our uh, modal or our code for one more time. So I'm gonna go and see if I can like just use two models and the same page. So I'm just gonna like change these elements. So I'm just gonna call this wrapper in this content. And here you can see it there. So the old model is still there. Now let's try to add uh, another model. So I'm just gonna call my function and I'm gonna pass in like the open for the button to select the button to open the model and then the wrapper and then the content. So if I save, I can open now the model. You cannot, you cannot see that X button there. So if I say here true and then open that model, you can now see the X button and we can click the model using that X button. And we're done. This is the end of our tutorial. Now our model can be used actually by anyone out there. You just need like to import the model.css and the model.js files we have created. And he can use our model by calling the function model and passing the right selectors. So this is it. I hope you learned something new today. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. See you in a new tutorial. Take care.